Hi everyone, this is take two. If you saw me before, having a little technical dif difficulty, sorry. So, it is Teresa from Teresa Silhouette Spot for All Things Art. And tonight we are going to paint the bunny, even though I'm wearing my shamrock green for St. Patrick's Day. So, I have my supplies out. I am using 11 by 14 canvas. But you can use any surface you want. You can use poster board, the inside of a shoebox, a piece of cardboard, um, copy paper. But if you're going to use copy paper, put like a few sheets under it. Um, whatever surface you have. You might have canvases at home. You might have canvases boards at home. You might have an old piece of artwork that you don't like anymore and now you're going to repaint it. So this project is geared towards children and the video will stay online. You can watch it, you can pause it, you can back it up, you can watch a step again, whatever you want to do. So I have my surface. I have my three brushes, a large, a small, and a liner brush. I have um, a chalk pencil, as opposed to chalk, but you can use a regular writing pencil, a piece of, piece of chalk. You can use a Sharpie if you wanted to. I use a chalk pencil, and then I have my paint. And I use um, folk art, multi-surface paints. You need a water cup, I have my water basin, and then you need something to put your paints on. I use these plastic plates, but you can use a dish. And if you're working at home, I would suggest that you put down newspaper or cardboard or an old tablecloth, something to keep your surface clean. You will be able to get the paint off as long as it's wet. You just grab a wipe or a wet paper towel or something. You'll be able to get the wet acrylic paint right up. It's not a problem. So I'm going to put the camera up and we are going to get started, okay? I tried to use my overhead camera, but I don't know. I'm wearing my lucky Irish green, but I'm not having very much technical luck tonight. So I'm going to turn you around. Hi, Amy, it's nice to see you. I'm gonna turn you guys around and face you down and get started on my bunny project. Let's see, is that good? Let's see if that's good. A little shady, maybe. Put this up somewhere, get it out of the way. How's that? What do you guys think? Is it working? It's working. Okay, I'll just move over a little bit. So, we are going to start out with our darkest blue. I have two colors of blue here. One is Ink Spot and one is Look At Me blue. You want a lighter one and a darker one. And we are going to start out with the dark one. All right. Whatever surface you have, I am using an 11 by 14. You don't need that much paint either. I would say when it spreads out, maybe it's the size of a quarter. So you can always put more if you need more. I'm going to fix my light again, you guys. Sorry. I don't like how it's throwing shade. How's that? Uh. Okay. So, I will try and look at comments while we do this. But it's hard enough to paint and talk. Paint talk and look at comments is really difficult, but we'll see, we'll see. So, how is everyone enjoying their uh, stay at home days? Is it okay? Keeping busy? Um, so maybe uh, if you want a little something to do, a little artwork, you'll have this nice bunny project. So I'm gonna take the bigger brush, it's called a flat brush. This is a three quarter. And I'm going to pick up some of this blue paint on both sides of my brush. And we're just going to start painting the sky. And I like to turn. And we're just going to go across the top. And see how it's kind of skipping a little bit? We need more paint. And we're just going to keep... Adding paint to our canvas. 
okay? If you want, which I often do, you can paint the top. and the sides. This is a great project. I would say five and up, any level. Um, children, I mean adults can do this too. It's a cute little project. But I would say five and up are good and obviously everyone's painting is going to be different. But that is the beauty of artwork. You can take a group of people who've been painting for years and give them the same project and the same paints, same brushes, same templates, everything. And when all is said and done, the projects will look completely different. So now I'm going to take, as we work our way down, now I'm going to take our next blue. So I had a dark blue, it was ink spot. Now I have look at me blue, which is lighter. And I'm going to add that to my palette. Okay. And now with keeping the dark in my brush, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of this lighter blue and we wanna start blending it with the dark. And that's it. You're just gonna keep going back and forth, back and forth. Add in the lighter blue to the darker blue for your sky. And you want it to be a little streaky, it's okay. And we're gonna go about two thirds down the surface. I usually use my hand. You, if you're little, you might wanna use um, two hands, but for me, I'm gonna use one hand and I'm gonna put a little mark. That's as far down as we're gonna wanna go with our blue. I'm gonna need a little bit more light blue on my paint palette here. So. Since you guys, you might, depending on how big your surface is or how big your little hand is, you might want to use two hands, use a ruler, whatever you think. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna paint my sides. Can you see that? On the other side. And obviously if you're working on paper or cardboard or the inside of a shoe box, whatever it is, you won't have sides to paint. But as I go along, we do. So now I'm gonna add white to this. And I'm still keeping my brush with the blue paint. I had the dark blue, then I had the light blue. I'm still gonna keep my brush just like that. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white on one side. Okay? And now I'm gonna start blending the white in with the light blue. It's kind of giving it a little bit of a ombre look where you start out really, really dark and you go light, but that's it. It's basically going back and forth. Oh, going up a little high there with the brush. And as you add more white and the white begins to take over, there's my mark. It's less blue and it's more light. And here I'm going to do my sides again. Now, since we're done with the blue, I am going to wash my brush. And this is where if you have a 
a plastic cup or a disposable cup or some kind of um, Tupperware container or whatever. You have a cup of water and you just want to swish, swish, swish your brush in it. And then I take paper towels, I reuse my paper towels, and I almost make a sandwich. I'll put the brush in between the paper towel, fold the paper towel, and pull it off. And now your brush is ready for the next colors of paint. So down here, this is gonna be like a little bit of um, grass. So I'm gonna take our lighter green. So I have two greens here. I have a citrus green and a sap green. Okay, and I'm using the Folk Art multi-surface paints. I'm going to take the light green, put a little bit on my paint palette. And when I say paint palette, you guys know I just mean this plastic plate. And I'm gonna use the same brush that we just washed off and I'm gonna get some green paint. And now I'm going to fill in the bottom with this let me move this board for my uh, computer. I'm just gonna fill in the bottom with this green paint. My pencil out of the way. So, you guys can make this for a present, you can make it to hang in your room, you can give it to one of your siblings, whatever you think. So, and it's fun. And this background, if you like um, unicorns or sloths or, I don't know, even kitty cats, you can use this background for all kinds of things. Other paintings if you want. I'm going to go in and do my sides and my bottom over here. Okay. And this is just the base coat. This is just the start of our project. A painting is an entire process. So you want to wait until the very end before you start, you know, taking notice of how it looks because at the very end is when the whole painting comes together. Okay? So, that is the start of our base coat. Okay? So now I'm going to use the same brush so I'm telling you, three brushes, that's all you need. I'm gonna use the same brush and I'm gonna get out a little bit of the dark green. I need more of my light green as well. Got a little bit more of the light green. Okay. I say okay a lot, don't I? Is it bugging you? Oh, my notes over. Oh, where was I? Okay. All right, now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the dark green on this brush, but watch what I do. I'm gonna turn my project upside down and I'm gonna start adding blades of grass. So now I'm gonna use, see how the top of the brush is flat and pointy? That's called the chisel edge. Can you see that? So instead of using my paintbrush like this, flat, like you ordinarily use a paintbrush, I'm going to use it on this edge, the chisel edge, standing up and add grass. And I like when I paint to pull my strokes. This way I turn my painting upside down. You might want to keep it this way and do this. I prefer to turn it upside down and do this. Oh, need more paint. So you want your grass to come from the bottom of the green. And we're putting in grass blades. Are you on there? Yep. We're putting in grass blades or blades of grass over 
our light color. And now grass, you've been out in the grass, you've been on the lawn, you've been in the playground at school. Grass grows every which way. And so our grass is going to grow every which, which way. And some can be thicker, and some can be thinner, and some will be longer, and some will be shorter. And we're just going to go in and we're going to keep adding blades of grass to the bottom of our painting. And some of them, of course, will be longer and go off the top of here. And see what I'm doing? I'm just doing little tiny strokes, keeping the flat edge of the brush flat and just layering them on. So far, so good, everyone. Do we have any? Comments, let me see, I don't see any. Okay, we'll just keep plugging along. Art template for all kinds of stuff. And this video will stay up here on this Facebook page, the Teresa Silhouette Spot. So you can watch it over and over. If you have to go out, you can come back and finish your painting later. If you have to go and do homework, you can finish your painting later. If there's a part you're confused about or I went too fast on, you can just stop the video and get all caught up, figure out what it is that I was doing and then come back. Okay. Isn't this fun? I love to paint you guys. One of my favorite things to paint is bumblebees. One of my next favorite things to paint is hmm, sunflowers. One time I painted a unicorn um, but I will honestly say, my unicorn needs a little practice. Now these I'm just going in because I want a little bit to cross over the top into where we had the sky. See? And there's my grass. So now, we need to let this dry for a few minutes. If I had a hair dryer, which I don't think I do. Plus, I don't want to run the hair dryer, get you guys all freaked out. Oh, I know what we can do while we let that dry. We can go on to our um, dandelions. So our bunny is going to be about right here. I'm just going to put a mark for our bunny. So while we have the green, I'm going to show you how we're going to go on to do our dandelions. So you want to pick up more green paint. And now, yes, we're still going to use the chisel edge, but we're going to apply a little bit more pressure. When we were doing these grass strokes, I wasn't hardly pushing on the brush. Now, I'm going to use the chisel edge. I'm going to hold my brush upright. But when I do it, I'm going to push down and draw a stem. Okay? And then I'm going to do that again. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to push down and draw a stem. So see how when I did that, I started like this, but then I flattened out my brush and it got fat. That's what we're going to do. Okay. And then I'm going to take the dark green and I just picked up, see the corner, the very, very corner. I picked up a little corner of the light green. So we can put leaves down here on the bottom of our stem. And the way we do that, we're actually gonna push the brush sideways. So we're gonna take the brush and we're gonna push it sideways. Okay? 
if you want, you can take your brush and you know how to draw a leaf, right? So if you were gonna draw a leaf, you can draw a leaf like that, or you can use a pencil, and then you can color it in. Or you can do what I did and take your brush and hold it and push it sideways. Or if you want another, draw another one, and it's okay that they overlap. They're allowed to overlap. You draw another leaf and paint that in with your brush. So now our stems have leaves. And we're doing this while we wait for our grass to dry so we can paint our bunny. I just wanna go over my stem a little bit here as little. Okay, so we're done with our green paint and our fat brush for now. So you can wash it, wash it, wash it in the water. Now I'm going to go to our liner brush, which is this one, a little old regular paintbrush. I'm going to get some fresh white. Probably gonna need. We're going to need a lot of white for this project because it's a bunny. Put out some white, and we're gonna take and we're gonna pick up some paint with our paintbrush. And you want to make sure you get quite a bit of paint on there. You don't want it dripping off or hanging off or anything, but you want a fairly amount of decent paint on there like that. And we're gonna use the same technique that we used for the grass. We're gonna use for our dandelions. So here's the tip of our where our dandelion starts. And we're just gonna pull out. Pull out from the dandelion. Okay? And make all these. You ever see when you have the dandelions and they turn to white in the yard? Well, that's what this is. And once again, it's almost like the same thing that we did for the grass strokes but we're doing it in white and we're using the little brush this time and they overlap. What do you guys think? If you paint this, I would love for you guys to share your pictures with me. I don't know how many of you have smartphones, but I'm sure one of your parents do, and they can take a picture of your painting. Doesn't have to be a picture of you. I know the internet can be a scary place, but they can take a picture of your painting and post it here for you. Okay, and then we're gonna start on the other one. See, we have this other stem in there that I covered up. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pull out the little wispies from our stem for our dandelion. See how light I'm doing that? I'm hardly touching the brush to the surface. And you can make them as full as you want or as bare as you want. It's your project. You can do whatever you want. You could, that's why I said, I use a light blue and a dark blue. You can use whatever paint colors you want. You can make your sky a little purple. You can make your sky yellow. You can put a sun in your sky, whatever you want. So those are our dandelions. Now I'm gonna show you how we put a little bit of dandelions flying around as if, like when you take a dandelion and you go, and you blow and the seeds go floating all the way. Well, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add a few little floating away seeds. And all it is is a little, the same thing that we did. And then you just wanna add like little chicken feet to it. So we're gonna add a little bit of a soft stroke like that. The same thing we did with the grass and the um, flower. And then we're gonna just add 
little chicken feet to it. One there. And then add the chicken feet. Maybe we'll put one down here, floating down. Okay. All right, let's see. Is this a green still a little wet? We're going to have to let it dry a little bit. Or you know what? I am going to get my hair dryer. One second. Don't mind the noise, okay? This way we can keep this project um, under an hour. So sorry for the noise, you guys. be the beauty of watching this on the replay you won't have to listen to the hand dryer you can fast forward right through that part okay so now we're going to start on our bunny it is a bunny painting after all isn't it so I cheat I can't draw a circle I might be able to paint grass and skies and dandelions but I can't draw a circle so I got this plate from the kitchen it's a cereal bowl okay and it was a good size and so I'm going to put it on here and then I'm going to get my chalk. Oops. I use a chalk pencil. You can use a regular pencil, a piece of chalk, a Sharpie, just not a crayon. Don't use a crayon. And I'm going to draw, trace, basically, this plate for our bunny. Okay, done with this, done with this, put it aside. Now I'm gonna go back to the big brush that we used for the green. Remember I said to clean your brush? Switch it, switch it, switch it in water. Lay it on the paper towel, make it like a sandwich, and squeeze the water out. And now all we're gonna do, we're gonna go back in here because this dried. Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to draw our ears. We might as well draw our ears on at the same time. You know how bunny ears look, right? They come to a point. Top of the head. To a point. See that? Now we're going to take our white. And we're going to fill in the whole circle and the ears with white.
And that's our bunny head. I need some more white paint. I'm gonna pick up some white paint. And when I fill in shapes, I like to outline them. And when I color with crayons, I like to outline my stuff as well. I will always outline first and then go back and color. Okay, what do you think guys? You like this project? We'll let that dry a little bit. I'm gonna clean off my brush, because now we're gonna go to this brush that we haven't used yet. And we're gonna get ready to do our bunny face. We want to add some pink to the ears. We're going to do a little pink bunny nose. We have to add the eyes and the mouth and some whiskers. So I'm going to put out a little bit of this. I have magenta, but you can use whatever kind of pink that you have. And we're going to get some magenta and we're going to follow the shape of the ears and add the pink inside. Now my magenta is very dark, but since my white is still wet, it's mixing and that's okay. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. If you want to go back and give them a second coat so they're a little darker, you can do that. Ooh. I'm going to go and give a bunny a nose. A bunny nose is like an upside down um, triangle or an upside down heart. So you can wait for your paint to dry and draw your eyes and your nose and your face on first, but for this tutorial I'm just gonna keep painting so I'm gonna do a straight line and then I'm gonna curve down and curve down for my bunny nose I went over a little bit on the top so let me just fix that there we go okay So I think we're done with the pink for now. I'm gonna go back to my liner brush. And we need a little, what is this? Oh, that's blue, we don't want blue, we want black. Little bit of black. I'm gonna use the liner brush again, the skinny one that we had before. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black and I'm gonna draw two circles for the eyes. And again, if, I, if you wanted to trace something, you can use the top of a paint cap or um, I don't know what else you might have around that small and round if you wanted to trace something, but I'm just gonna draw it in the bunny eyes. That's one. 
You want to make them even and the same size as best as you can. It's two. I'm going to give the money his mouth. So you want to come down and curve up. Come down and curve up. I'm going to give our bunny some whiskers. And this is the same way we did the grass. You're just pulling out little fine lines. I'm going to put a little black go back over that one to make the whiskers. You don't want them too thick. It's okay if they get thicker, but you don't want them too thick. Okay? Oh, I could use this brush. I'll leave my black. Then I'm going to go back and pick up the small brush, and I'm going to get a little bit of the dark green and just paint a little bit of green in the eyes. And once again, my white is still wet. So it's not real dark. And I kind of like it like that. Um, but if you wanted to wait for your white to dry and then do the green, you can. There's my bunny face. Now we're just going to pick up a little bit more black. And we're going to outline our ears a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just want them to be able to stand out a little bit. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. outline my bunny a little bit. So you don't have to outline your bunny if you don't want to. I just wanted him to stand out a little more. And uh, that's it. I might, let me just add a little bit of white in my eyes. I'm just going to add a dot and a dot. Oh, and a little swish on the nose. Little highlight on the nose. And there you have it. And that's it. There's our bunny. He's all done. What do you guys think? I'm going to take you down for a minute. Sorry. Anyway, let's turn you around. Oops. And that's it. So, I hope you enjoyed this bunny painting. Like I said, you can use any blues you want, any greens you want. You want, might want to make your sky um, yellow and orange or pink, whatever. It's art. Art can't be wrong. Art is art. And that's it. So, I hope you enjoyed this painting. I hope it gives you a little something to do while you're home on the next uh, few days or week or so, missing your friends at school. And um, enjoy. And if you can, and your mom, parents, babysitter, whoever it is that you're with, says it's okay. I would love to see a picture of your paintings. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye.